Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I will show you how to use the VLOOKUP function. Now the VLOOKUP function can be used to retrieve data from a table or a range. It is different to HLOOKUP in that it searches values by row instead of by column. For example, it can help us find an employee's ID based on their name as shown in example 1. Let's start by going through the VLOOKUP formula. So upon inputting equals VLOOKUP, we're going to input what we are looking up. We're then going to select where we are looking for it. So in which table array is this lookup value found? Then we're going to add which column contains the value we need. And finally, we're going to input whether it is an approximate or an exact match. Now, whether we use an approximate or an exact match will depend on the type of value we are looking up. In example one, we will first look at using an exact match. In example one, we have a table containing a list of names and the corresponding IDs. We're going to want to find the ID that corresponds to the name John by searching for it in the table. Now to do this, we're going to click equals VLOOKUP. We're going to look up the name John within the table provided. And we're going to look to retrieve the value in the second column. And as a result, we're going to click two because this is the column that contains the ID. And finally, we're going to click false as this is an exact match. As you can see, we are given an ID of 5152, which is the one that corresponds to the name John. Now, if we change the name to Sarah, you'll notice that the ID changes accordingly. However, sometimes the value that we are looking up will not be exactly provided in the table, as shown in example two. Here, we are looking up an income of 20,000. However, we are only provided with tax bands of 0, 12,500, 50,000, and 150,000. In such situations, we need to use an approximate match. So once again, we're going to click equals VLOOKUP. We're looking up the income of 20,000 within the table provided. And once again, we're looking to retrieve the value in the second column, as this is the one that corresponds to the tax rate. The only difference now is that we're going to click true instead of false, as we want an approximate match. We can close brackets and click enter. Therefore, what Excel has done is provide us with the next best value that is below 20,000. In other words, we are given the tax rate that corresponds to an income of 12,500. You'll notice that even if we increase the lookup value to 49,000, Excel will still retrieve a tax rate of 20%, which applies to an income of 12,500. If, however, we look up an income of 51,000, then we will obtain a tax rate of 40%, which corresponds to an income of 50,000. This is because the nearest tax band that is lower than 51,000 is indeed 50,000. In the next example, we will consider a situation where we want to not only retrieve values in the second column, but also in the third or fourth columns. Firstly, we want to retrieve the surname that corresponds to the name Jacob. To do this, we will once again start by clicking equals VLOOKUP. We will look up the name Jacob within the table provided, and we're looking to retrieve the value in the second column, as this is the one that corresponds to the surname. And we're going to click false as it is an exact match because the name Jacob is exactly provided in the table. Next, we want to retrieve the ID that corresponds to the name Jacob. We can follow the exact same process. The only difference now is that we're looking to retrieve the value in the third instead of the second column. So as a result, we can now click three and once again, we can click false. For the telephone number, we may choose to look up Jacob's surname instead of his first name. So once again, we click equals VLOOKUP. We're now looking up his surname and we're going to adjust the table array to only include these values here. We're then going to click three as the telephone number is in the third column within this table array. And once again, we can click false. We can now test whether the functions work for other names by changing the name to say John. As you can see, we're provided with the correct surname, which is Smith, but also the correct ID and telephone number. Therefore, this example has demonstrated the power of VLOOKUP in retrieving large amounts of data. In the final example, we will use absolute references to help us when dealing with a large amount of cells. Here, we're looking to retrieve the currency and language for the given country. So once again, we can click equals VLOOKUP. We're looking up the value Germany within the following table array. And we're looking to retrieve the value in the second column, which corresponds to the currency. And it is an exact match, so we can click false. 
Now you'll notice that when I click enter, we're provided with a bunch of NA values. And the reason for this is that as we go down, the table array goes down as well. Now to ensure that the table array remains constant, we can add absolute references by highlighting the table array and clicking F4. Now you'll notice that when I click enter now, we're provided with the correct values. Now we can do the same thing to retrieve the language which corresponds to the given country. So we can click equals VLOOKUP. We're looking up this value here within the table provided and we can straight away add the absolute references by highlighting the table array and clicking F4. We can then retrieve the value in the third column and click false. Therefore, we are provided with all the correct currencies and languages which correspond to the countries. Before we wrap up, a final tip I would like to give is that whenever you are looking up a value, this value must be leftmost in the table array. In other words, if you are looking up the name which corresponds to the given ID, then the ID column must be to the left of the name column for the VLOOKUP function to work. So that's how you use the VLOOKUP function. It's really a great technique to help you retrieve data without having to do it manually. I hope you found this video useful. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to the Excel Hub for weekly Excel tutorials, techniques and examples.